Good morning, honorable colleagues. Thank you for bearing with us. Um, I now call the meeting to order. Please allow me to invite our committee secretary, Ms. Edna, to present the credentials of delegates and confirm the quorum for the meeting. Edna. Over to you, Edna. Please bear with us. Hello? They might just be. Hello? Yes. Um, Mr. Chairman, can you get me? This is Mr. Kotwane. I, I, I can hear you, Honorable Mr. Kotwane. Can you hear me? Yes, I've just spoken to Edna. Yes. Uh, telling her that you are trying to contact her, but she says she's unable to hear you. So it must be gremlins in the system there. Honorable Mr. Kotwane, I can hear you, but however, I can't hear the chair. So she's now saying that she can hear me very well, but she can't hear Chairman Devele. I just heard her speak, so it must be a problem on my side. Um, I'm trying to check what could be going wrong in my system. All right. Honorable Mendez, can you hear me, Deputy Chair? Yes. Thank you, Honorable. Yes, I can hear you. Hello, Edna. Honorable no, Chair, I can't hear you. Please change your oh. language to, to English. Oh, okay. And unmute original audio. Unmute original audio. Are we good now, Edna? Yes, Chair, we are. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable members. Sorry about the glitches there. Uh, without much ado, let me invite uh, our committee secretary, Ms. Edna, to present the credentials of delegates and confirm the quorum for the meeting. Thank you, Honorable Chair. We have 38 participants at the moment and the credentials for the Honorable Members who are present are as follows. We have the Chairperson himself, Honorable Ndebele, he's from Zimbabwe. We also have uh, Honorable Ruth Mendes, the Vice Chair from Angola. We have Honorable Dumelang Saleshando, Botswana, uh, we have Honorable Tsepang Mosena, Lisutu. We have Honorable Denis Nama Chekecha, Malawi. We have uh, South Africa being represented by proxy, Honorable Rosina Komane, uh, South Africa. You're welcome, Honorable. We have Zambia, Honorable Thumbeko Msokotwani. Chair, we are on firm grounds to begin the meeting. We have quorum. Thank you. Thank you, Edna. Um, we now move on to the consideration and adoption of the agenda. Honorable members, the draft agenda for the meeting was circulated to all members. Are there any proposals to amend the draft agenda? Honorable Chair, if I may, sorry for interrupting you. We've we have an apology from Madagascar, just for the record. Noted, uh, Secretary. Any proposals to amend 
the draft agenda, honorable members. I presume silence. Mr. Chairman, I propose that we adopt the agenda. Any seconder? I second. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Namacheka. Let me remind honorable members to put their mobile phones on on silent. Honorable members, the agenda is accordingly adopted. I will now move on to give you my welcome remarks. Honorable members, the Secretary General of the Sadiq Parliamentary Forum, resource persons, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Harare, Zimbabwe. It is my singular honor and privilege to welcome you to this important virtual engagement. The Kenyans have a saying, which if my memory serves me well, goes. If the rhythm of the trumpet changes, the dance step must adapt. A constant truth about the COVID-19 global pandemic is that it has significantly changed the way we live our lives and work. Allow me to begin by commending our SADC PF Secretariat under the stewardship of our hardworking Secretary General, Ms. Poemo Sekoma, for quickly adapting to what is now famously known as the new normal. By leveraging the limitless possibilities that information technology offer, the forum has made it possible for us wherever we are, to discharge our mandate, which includes representation, lawmaking, and ensuring accountability. I am sure that honorable members would be delighted to join me in congratulating our own brother, His Excellency Mr. Weevil Ramkalawani, on his well-deserved election as president of the Republic of Seychelles. In the same vein, I wish to salute the people of Seychelles for holding peaceful and exemplary elections and for the outgoing president and his team for not only accepting the outcome of the polls with dignity, but for offering to join hands with the new administration to make Seychelles a more stable and prosperous country. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, we are meeting under the theme, enhancing the role of parliament in budgeting for increased budget credibility and public financial accountability in times of pandemics and crisis. This is a timely and relevant theme. A defining characteristic of crisis and pandemics is their unpredictability. This necessitates preemptive planning and budgeting to ensure robust, timeless, and adequate responses. Ideally, those that are financially supported by domestic resources. No nation is ever ready for a pandemic or a crisis. As such, the response to the effects brought about by pandemics such as the COVID-19 
exact that pressure on the risk of respective study countries. Additionally, crises and pandemics invariably prompt ill-prepared countries to borrow at a whim as they scramble to respond to the eventuality and retain the What about by COVID-19 cannot be overemphasized. A desperate country is a bad negotiator. In Intérprete, então convém alertar o, o senhor presidente da sessão. Acho que agora foi tudo. Sorry, honorable members, I lost you for a while. Can you hear me, Vice Chair? Thank you. Sorry about that, it's moving in fits and starts. I'll recheck that. During a crisis, many governments all over the world and in the Sadiq region in particular, respond to the pandemic by committing to do whatever it takes to support their people and economies. These responses usually compress national budgets to a large extent and put many governments under a lot of financial distress. As it has been rightly observed under such difficult circumstances, the executive can be under pressure to alter budgets through supplementary budgets. This is where our role lies. Today, even amidst many uncertainties surrounding domestic fiscal mobilization, budget financing from donor funding, and uninformed fiscal projections should be directed towards ensuring that parliamentary budget oversight is enhanced and maintained. Times of crisis call for close parliamentary budget tracking, ensuring national budgets are transparent, public financial accountability is heightened, budget deviations and variations are minimally kept. Apart from helping our member states to always serve for the, provi for the proverbial rainy day, we must and can ensure that the response to effects of pandemics and crisis do not significantly disadvantage our sector in terms of budget allocations and importantly budget releases. I am confident that this engagement will enlighten the members of parliament on the tools to use in performing their oversight with respect to budget processes. Permit me to end by thanking all those who worked hard to make this virtual engagement possible. I wish you all fruitful deliberations. It is now my singular honor and privilege to declare 
this meeting officially open. I thank you. Uh, honorable members, we shall now consider the two sets of minutes to confirm if they are a correct record of the two meetings. You will be reminded that uh, we met over two days, virtually, of course. We shall consider the minutes item by item to accommodate any differences in pagination across the languages, starting with the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 6th of July, 2020. I now invite members to make corrections if there are any, item by item. Edna, you may you may also come in to to guide the process, but uh, I am so glad the documents were were circulated well before time, and uh, it will be pleasing to note that colleagues have really gone through them and they have the corrections ready. Honorable Chair, maybe you may lead the process by going item by item, starting with uh, item number one, which is uh, members who were present and accordingly going to uh, the other items in the, in the minutes. All right. So the first virtual meeting of the Standing Committee on trade, industry, finance, and investment was held on Monday. On Monday, the 6th of July, 2020, in attendance were the following members who convened via Zoom. Honorable Eckbert Agle, who was Chairman then, Honorable Sepang Sita Mosina, who was Vice Chairperson then, Honorable Ruth Mendez, Honorable Tumelang Salishando, Honorable Dennis Namachekecha, Honorable Jimmy Donovan, Honorable Marie Joanne Sabrin Tor, Honorable Slengiwem Kalipi, Honorable Dr. Tumbego Msokotwane, and then myself, Anel Ndebele. Absent without apology, the Parliament of Democratic Republic of Congo, Mozambique, Eswatini, in Tanzania were not represented at the meeting. The Secretary General pledged to inquire from the honorable members on their absence. The Secretary General also informed the meeting that the SADC PF was yet to receive a nomination from the Parliament of Namibia. In attendance, Ms. Oemo Sekoma, Mr. Godfrey, the Secretary General, Mr. Godfrey Zulu of Zambia, uh, Ms. Paulina Kangujiwi oh, of the SADC PF Secretary. Honorable Vice Chair. The chair was at the point of considering the minutes of the first meeting. Hello, Honorable Vice Chair, are you there? Honorable Vice Chair, I see, I see that you are back. 
we had just lost the chair and he requested that you take over with chairing the meeting. He was at the point of considering the minutes of the first meeting and you may accordingly just proceed with the process, Honorable Chair, by calling for uh, amendments from Honorable Members, if any, going item by item. We are on page two, okay, Honorable Vice open. Chair, on work on members. You may continue. Data da reunião do dia 6, certo? Certo? Posso continuar? Portanto, no que toca à ata do dia 6... Uh, e, e eu considero que a, a, a ata foi distribuída com bastante antecedência uh, e ao invés de, 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 de apresentar ponto a ponto vamos uh, página por página uh, e quem tiver algo a, 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 a referir uh, então poder, poder pedir a palavra Portanto, na página 2, alguém tem alguma referência a fazer? No que toca à página 2, da ata do dia 6? Por favor, tem a palavra... Alguém se quer referir à página 2 da ata do, da reunião do dia 6? Portanto, como não há, não há nenhuma, nenhum pedido de palavra... Vamos então passar para a página 3. A página data e gostaria de saber se alguém tem algo a acrescentar ou algum comentário a fazer ou, ou, ou alguma correção a fazer Estou a sentir a reunião um pouco muda ou é impressão minha? We can hear you, Madam Vice Chairperson. Please continue. Okay. Uh, the violence means that all is well. Okay. Muito obrigada. Muito obrigada. Uh, no que toca a página 4, gostaria de saber se há alguma, alguma contribuição ou algum comentário a fazer. Portanto, como não há, não, há, não há nenhum pedido de palavra também em relação à página 4, 
Vamos então passar para a última página, que é a página 5. Portanto, saber se alguém tem algum comentário a fazer em relação à página 5. Distintos colegas, o silêncio indica que não temos nenhuma, nenhum pedido de palavra. Parece que temos aqui. Não, não temos nenhum pedido de palavra e, sendo assim, vamos então passar a votação à ata do dia 6 de julho do, do, do nosso comitê. Distintos colegas, submeto a ata para aprovação. Quem está de acordo, podemos aprovar a ata. Podemos aprovar a ata. Yes, Otsuana, I propose that the minutes be adopted. And I second. Uh, Chair? Um, Chair, can I intervene before the adoption? Senhora, por Chair? Honorable Zepan? Yes? Uh, the chair has given you the floor. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm juggling quite a number of things. I'm, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Chair, for, for the opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm still in Parliament, but I'm also trying to participate here as well. Just before the adoption of this minute, I have a question, unless it's already been, it's already been addressed, on the fact that we have two sets of uh, minutes. I'm just wondering if it's in order, they were two separate uh, meetings, or is it in order that we have two sets of, mit of minutes for one meeting? That's just the clarification I need. Thank you. I may take the floor, Honorable Vice Chair. The, the two meetings were separate meetings held on two different days. Hence the two sets of meetings. Thank you. Honorable Chair, just for the Vice Chair, just for the record, uh, Botswana proposed the, the adoption of the meaning and Malawi accordingly, accordingly seconded without amendments. We may proceed to the second set of minutes, Honorable Vice Chair. Muito obrigada e muito obrigada pela, pela aprovação, então, da parte dos colegas da ata do dia 6. Vamos então passar para a ata do dia 7 de julho. Uh, em que estão presentes uh, estão presentes 10 de, países uh, Seychelles, Lesoto, Angola, Botswana, Malawi, Madagascar, Maurice, uh, África do Sul, Zâmbia e Zimbábue. 
e onde temos uh, as ausências de Moçambique, Eswatini uh, e da Tanzânia. Uh, portanto, no que toca à página 1, onde temos as presenças e as ausências uh, e também a direção da reunião, Está tudo bem? Alguém quer se pronunciar sobre essa primeira página? Portanto, se não haver nenhuma, nenhuma intervenção, nenhum pedido de palavra, vamos então passar para a página 2. Uh, no que toca a página 2, alguém uh, se quer pronunciar? Portanto, o silêncio indica que uh, não temos nenhuma intervenção. Uh, vamos então passar para a página 3. Alguém se quer pronunciar? em relação à página 3 da ata do dia 7. Não temos também nenhum pedido de palavra em relação à página 3. Em relação à página 4, passamos para a página 4, por favor. Uh, algum pedido de palavra? Alguém tem algo uh, em relação à página 4? Uh. Portanto, até aqui não temos nenhum pedido de palavra. Vamos passar para a página 5 da ata do dia 7. Alguém se quer pronunciar? Página 5. Não há nenhum pedido de palavra, vamos passar à página 6. Não temos nenhum pedido de palavra aqui em relação à página 6. Vamos passar à página 7. Vamos, não temos nenhum pedido de palavra também para a página 7. Vamos passar para a página 8. Distintos deputados. Uh, até aqui não houve nenhum pedido de palavra uh, consideramos então que uh, estão todos de acordo com aquilo que está apresentado na ata do dia 7 pelo que gostaria de saber quem pode uh, secundar a aprovação da ata do dia 7 
Tem a palavra, senhores deputados. Morning, how are you? Thank you. Can I just pay for the reading glass and I got also because no problem? It's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't use it. Honorable Chair, Honorable Vice Chair, you may call for a proposal and a seconder for the adoption of the minutes. Okay. But I don't make the cover of the file. Okay. 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 Honorable members, the chairperson has uh, invited uh, members to move for the adoption of the minutes. Um, we may be metric. Hello, SG. I'm sorry I just stepped out, but now I'm back in the room. Yes, Chair. There was a request for the adoption of the minutes and a few clarifications offered. Um, mm -hmm. Now we need to be proceeding, but I'm not sure what could be the, the challenge. Uh, uh, yeah, so, you know, I propose for the adoption. A second, so Kotone, a second. Thank you. Yeah, muito obrigada. Uh, vamos então adotar a, a, a ata da, 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 da reunião realizada no dia de Adotada? Estamos todos de acordo? Yes, Chairperson, we are. Muito obrigada, muito obrigada. A ata, tá, a ata da reunião do dia 7 está então adotada. Vamos passar para o ponto a seguir que está relacionada com a análise do projeto do plano de trabalhos para o, o ano. Eu queria pedir o secretariado, o, o secretariado do, do, da comissão para uh, fazer a apresentação da da, da, da do, do plano, perdão, do plano de trabalhos da comissão permanente. Thank you, Honorable Honorable Chair. I, I have I have shared the 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 draft work plan on the screen. It was accordingly shared with the honorable members of parliament. If any members 
have any changes to make to the draft work plan, they are free to do so. It may take the floor, honorable chair. Eu, eu, eu em, relação, em relação ao plano, ao plano de trabalhos, eu tenho, tenho uma preocupação. Nós estamos aqui a, a, a pôr algumas atividades durante o mês de novembro. Entretanto, eu queria chamar a atenção os colegas, não sei se também têm esse problema, mas o mês de novembro para o Parlamento Angolano é o mês em que nós aprovamos o orçamento. E há uma série de atividades à volta uh, da aprovação do orçamento. Uh, eu não sei se não seria bom nós revermos as datas que estão aqui a ser propostas. 19 e 20 de novembro, 26 e 27 de novembro, que são de facto datas que, pelo menos a nível do Parlamento Angolano, chocam com aquilo que é a, 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 o processo da aprovação do Orçamento Geral do Estado para o próximo ano. Um, Madam Chairperson, may I make a comment? Pode sim. Pode sim, senhora. Tem a palavra. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Could I perhaps suggest that uh, uh, we get to the substance that is being presented and uh, agree on those? For example, I think uh, one of the items is the uh, budget issues related to COVID. But maybe to be more, to be clearer, if we discuss the issues that are being proposed for the work plan, and then after that, we can get into the issues of uh, which time is uh, suitable and which one is not. But I thought the first thing to discuss is uh, the content and whether it is acceptable. I submit. Okay. De acordo, completamente de acordo, sim, completamente de acordo. Vamos então começar, uh, a data de 29 de outubro é inquestionável, está a acontecer neste momento, uh, o ponto, atividade número 2, curso, curso de curta duração sobre leitura e interpretação de acordos comerciais internacionais. O, o caso do Acordo do Comércio Livre Continental Africano, pelo Centro de Direito Comercial. Uh, gostaria, então, de saber se, em relação à atividade número 2, uh, estamos todos de acordo que ela seja realizada nesses momentos. Uh, Madam Chairperson. I, I, I do propose that I agree with that particular item. I think it will be an important one for us to, now that we are getting into the free trade area, for us as parliamentarians to be schooled on how to understand the agreement. So for me, that topic is a, is important and um, 
Yes, Mr. Uh, Madam Chairperson. I was saying that on the part of Zambia, we are comfortable with the suggestion that this activity on how to uh, interpret the trade agreement under the free trade area, such an activity will be good so that we can be schooled, so that we can be educated on how to interpret their agreement. I submit. Obrigada uh, pela sua intervenção. Alguém mais quer pronunciar sobre a atividade número 2? Uh, 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 tem, tem a palavra a senhora secretária-geral. Um, thank you, honorable chairperson. Um, I apologize for the clash that seems to be happening in most of our parliaments who are looking at the budget. Um, however, I would like to indicate that this particular course on the free trade area was supposed to be held earlier, around July, if I'm not wrong. It was postponed and a date that was found suitable was the, the one that is reflected here. Also to indicate that this course was by registration. So those who were interested in participating in the course actually were made to apply for this course and the course was oversubscribed to about 70 or more participants. I therefore wish to put this uh, before the chairperson to consider the planning that has gone through and those who have already registered and confirmed their participation in this regard. I thank you chairperson. Muito obrigada, senhora secretária-geral. Eu não sei se ainda alguém se quer pronunciar em relação a este ponto, número 2. Da minha parte, eu também considero ser importante essa atividade. Uh, não está em causa a importância da, da atividade. Ela é efetivamente importante e, e mesmo porque nós queremos participar, por isso é que eu uh, pus a questão da, 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 da sobreposição de datas. Nós vamos, uh, então, eu sou da opinião que vamos deixar uh, uh, essas datas, que são aqui propostas, e depois uh, uh, cada um de nós de acordo com o programa dos nossos parlamentos, poderá ver então como poderá participar. Se tivermos todos de acordo, tanto considero que em relação à atividade número 2, ela é importante e de facto ela deve constar aqui do plano, só precisaremos depois pontualmente ver como fica a questão da, 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 das datas em função do, do, dos processos da aprovação uh, dos, nosso, dos, dos orçamentos nos nossos parlamentos. Uh, não sei se alguém mais quer pronunciar, mas se não tiver mais nenhuma intervenção, passemos então para a atividade número 3. Uh, as... Honorable atividade... Chairperson, if I may, um, I would... Sim, Maybe suggest that those parliaments who would have loved to attend and could not attend should kindly make the application so that we may discuss with the institute for a separate course to be considered. Um, 
at a date that can be mutually agreed upon. Um, we are not promising that this will be approved, but since we are in partnership with this particular organization, they may consider like they did a special dispensation for us to move this particular train to this date. I thank you, Chairperson, so that we do not leave out some parliaments that would have wanted to participate. But the key in this process is to make the application um, so that we are, we are able to um, approach the, 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 the organization with names and those who are interested. Thank you. Muito obrigada, senhora secretária-geral, e acho que esta é, de facto, uma boa solução. Nós também vamos analisar o nosso calendário de aprovação do orçamento e poderemos, então, nos pronunciar se vamos poder participar ou se vamos pedir para que seja numa outra data. Muito obrigada por essa decisão. Eu acho que foi uma decisão sábia da parte da secretária-geral. Passemos então para o ponto, a atividade 3, que é a escola de verão organizada pela Afro, Afrodat. E eu gostaria de passar a palavra aos distintos deputados para se pronunciarem em relação à atividade número 3. É... Madam Chairperson, can I come in? Surety is at the police department. They are being given bond. I was going to ask the uh, SG whether an item like this is something that can be done uh, in real people. As you can see, we are struggling with a quorum in these meetings. Partly because when you're on site, when you're on site, people see you, uh, they take it that you are valuable, you're present. So they give you all sorts of responsibilities and to divide attention between both the responsibilities and the virtual responsibility becomes a, uh, a problem. So for this, by Aphrodite, for example, is it possible that this could be done in real, uh, uh, by human beings, not via computers and uh, radio waves? That's just a question. Thank you. Thank you. I'm awaiting the chair's instruction to Tem a palavra, senhora secretária geral. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I I really understand that we have fever because of this COVID, um, honourable chair, and I completely understand that this new world order comes with pros and cons, some of which we may not realize now, but they do affect productivity on the one hand while they do increase it on the other. Um, regarding the Afrodad um, invitation, and Edna may correct me here, they did indicate that those participants that are in Zambia will attend in person, but those who are outside the region because of the COVID restrictions will be admitted online. I believe that this is something that all organizations are trying to find a middle ground to in tandem with the opening of borders and what governments are allowing flexibilities on. Um, I note your, your concern, Honorable uh, Musokotwani, it is noted that it is time to, to, to get out and bring back the, the interaction that human beings are used to. However, for now, we, we, we are consulting and we are guided 
by the sovereign um, decisions of the various countries that we have to transit, that we have to enter, and those that we have to leave. I thank you, Chairperson. And maybe to underscore that this is a, an annual training that this committee has uh, been receiving through AFRODAT, and it normally occurs at the same periods as indicated yes. above. Thank you, Chairperson. Muito obrigada, Sra. Secretária Geral. Uh, alguém mais quer pronunciar sobre o ponto 3? Uh, ou atividade 3 do, do nosso plano, da proposta do plano de atividades? Faz favor, tem a palavra. Me parece que alguém está a pedir a palavra. Não. Não tenho aqui nenhum pedido de palavra. Uh, vamos então uh, adotar, isso é um compromisso, como vimos a secretária-geral dizer, é um compromisso que já temos com a Afrodat e a data tem que ser uh, esta. Os senhores deputados que se encontram na Zâmbia participam presencialmente e os restantes uh, membros dos dos outros parlamentos deverão participar online. Portanto, em relação a esta atividade, como ela decorre dos compromissos que o secretariado da SADEC, que a SADEC tem, for parlamentar da SADEC tem, em princípio ela está, 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 está aprovada, vai constar aqui do nosso plano de atividades. Passemos então para a atividade número 4, rever o estado de ratificação do protocolo da SADEC. Alguém se quer pronunciar em relação à atividade número 4? No que toca à atividade número 4, não há nenhuma palavra. Me parece que estamos todos de acordo. Precisaríamos só depois de ver qual é o prazo. Apesar de estar aqui como prazo ainda a enunciar, mas talvez depois fosse bom fazermos constar o prazo limite para uh, termos a conclusão desta atividade. Por fim, temos a atividade número 5, workshop de partilha de ensinamentos sobre os postos fronteiriços de passagem única. Eu gostaria de saber se alguém se quer pronunciar sobre esta atividade. Senhores deputados, caros colegas, não temos aqui nenhum pedido de palavra, portanto, consideramos que uh, o facto de não haver ninguém a pronunciar-se é porque estamos todos de acordo. Uh, submeto, então, o, o plano de trabalhos da Comissão Permanente de Comércio, Indústria, Finanças e Investimento à aprovação. Quem é que pode uh, secundar a, a aprovação deste, do plano? Vê se ficamos sem som. Senhor intérprete? Senhor intérprete? Ok. A segunda, mas não funciona. Ok, muito obrigada. Tem a palavra, senhor deputado? 
si tembu si 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 tumbeku eh ah tem a palavra senhor deputado si correto já se conhece a sua voz Yes, I second it. Muito obrigada. Muito obrigada. Estamos então, adotamos então o um plano de trabalhos da comissão, a proposta que nos trouxemos inicialmente. Adota, está adotada o plano de trabalhos da comissão permanente do comércio, indústria, finanças e investimento. Yes. Está hoje está difícil. Agora todos bagar. Ok, não, estava a dizer que até as caras estavam a aparecer até aqui, todas desapareceram. Eu, eu gostaria de saber da secretária-geral se de facto temos condições de continuar essa reunião. Ou do, do, do comitê, do, do, do secretariado do comitê. Se temos condições de continuar essa reunião. Por favor, pode, pode saber deles. Honorable Vice Chairperson, if I may take the floor, there is a hand from the county chairperson, Honorable Debele, Honorable. Thank you. There is a hand on the screen from Honorable Debele and Honorable Sumbe from Scotland. With your permission. For me, this is a hand which I. For me, this is a hand I raised when I was trying to second the work plan. So it's been overtaken. I don't need to raise a hand anymore. Oh, okay. I see. I still see a hand from Honorable. Honorable, the Senior President of the Committee. Have the floor, Mr. Senior President of the Committee, and be welcome to our nosso convívio novamente. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Vice Chair. I I appreciate you holding and shouldering the yoke while I had been kicked out. And I'm so sorry at short notice, you had to carry all this weight. So I had put up my hand to indicate that indeed we are all ears and I'm sure we are good to continue with the meeting. Thank you for, for holding for it. Um, if my catching up is really up to speed, I believe the esteemed de nada, committee. De nada. Foi um prazer, foi um prazer. Portanto, nós, está, nós estávamos, concluímos o ponto 5. Vou então eh, dar a palavra, voltar o seu a seu dono. Thank you, thank you very much, Vice Chair. Uh, without much ado, honorable members and partners, we are starting our first session. You will note that the concept note is indicating that our resource persons are coming from African Forum and Network on Debt and Development, otherwise known in short as AfroDAD, 
and the Southern Africa Development Community Organization of Public Accounts Committees, SATCOPAC. However, SATCOPAC confirmed with Secretariat quite late that the resource persons were not ready and therefore they have been replaced by a resource, by a resource person from the parliamentary budget office at the Zambian parliament. We will now begin our first session uh, with Mr. Rangari Rai Chikova, the policy analyst at Afrodad, who will present on budget credibility and highlight factors driving low budget credibility. I thank you. Over to you, Mr. Ranga. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, with all protocols uh, observed, um, I would like to thank uh, Sadak PF uh, for giving us uh, this opportunity to make uh, presentations on our budget uh, credibility. So my name is uh, Rangarirai Chikova and I'm a policy analyst uh, at Afrodad and I'm in charge of the domestic resources mobilization uh, portfolio. So I'll be joined uh, 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 with my colleague Adrian Chikore, I think he's going to introduce himself um, when he makes uh, his uh, presentation. So my presentation is going to focus on uh, budget uh, credibility. Good afternoon, honorable members, and welcome back. We will quickly dive into our last segment. And I shall now invite Mr. Kateshi to make his presentation before this committee. Uh, we're gonna give him 20 minutes. And after his presentation, we will go into a question and answer session. Thank you, Mr. Kateshi, your committee. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I hope uh, I'm audible enough. Yes, you are loud and clear, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> You, you may proceed, we're all good. Okay. Just trying to, 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 to share my screen on uh, the, the, my presentation. Great, take your time. Okay. Yeah, but I'm eating into my 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 i'm eating into my <laughs> my time <laughs> okay I'm sure, I'm sure honorable members are going to be generous <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you thank you um um edna I'll ask uh, Madam Edna to proceed with. Uh, Can I help you share the screen? Yeah, yeah, just bring it up. Yeah. Okay. Are we good to go, Edna? I'm just opening the document. We'll be ready okay. in a few seconds. I think we are good. Okay. We are good to go? Yes. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. 
Edna, you're not sharing the screen. I've not, not, I've not shared not the screen. the PowerPoint. Uh, just kindly, wait, just a moment. Let me stop it for you. Okay. okay. Try and share it now. Okay. How's that? Yeah, that's good now. I just make okay. it. Uh, Okay, are we good to go? I'll okay. stick to yeah, I'll, I'll stick to my 20 minutes. Don't worry. Yeah. So uh, uh, my role this afternoon is to share some thoughts on the role of parliament in budgeting and uh, oversight, uh, with particular reference to uh, COVID-19 uh, pandem uh, pandemic and other crises. Uh, my name is uh, Fitzgerald Kateshi. I work in the Parliamentary Budget Office in the National Assembly of uh, Zambia. So I'll start with, uh, with a quote from uh, some uh, experts who work in the IMF uh, regarding accountability during a crisis. They say, do whatever it takes, but make sure you keep the receipts. So as much as an emergency and- Kindly emergency... move the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint are not. Hello? The quotation first. The oh, the quotation. Oh, okay. So the quotation goes, whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes, but make sure you keep uh, the receipts. So the, it's in line with the theme that uh, emergencies require speed in, to, to be dealt with, but whatever it takes, make sure that uh, we still keep the receipts for accountability because nobody will listen when it's not an open check. So that's, uh, that's the quote in, in line with uh, the discussion uh, uh, that is before the committee. So my budget outline, my presentation has got uh, six main points, which I'll share. I'll briefly touch on parliamentary oversight, role of the par parliament in the budget process, overview on uh, crises, then uh, accountability challenges, oversight uh, during a crisis, then uh, we'll end with uh, sharing some thoughts on how oversight can be enhanced in time of uh, when we are faced with a crisis. So to start with, uh, oversight is one of the challenges, uh, one of the function of, uh, of the legislature. Uh, of course, the others being uh, to, to legislate and also the other being uh, to, to be a representative uh, of uh, uh, the constituents in the whole uh, country. Now they have, there's a, a description of oversight which I uh, which I'm sharing. Uh, of, of course, some people refer to this to refer mostly to uh, to presidential system, but I think that it, it contains quite uh, important points that uh, one should take note of when uh, discussing a parliamentary budget of uh, oversight. The first one is that uh, oversight. Uh, relates to overseeing that policy or including laws are implemented in, uh, in accordance with uh, the intentions. Secondly, is that to, the, to determine whether policy is effective and its impact is in accordance with what uh, the parliamentary standards. Uh, thirdly, to prevent waste and dishonesty and to assure uh, efficiency uh, in ex when executing these uh, policies. Fourthly, to prevent uh, discretionary abuse by office uh, bearers. And lastly, to represent the public interest by monitoring and constraining the agency clientele group uh, uh, relations. So these are some of the points that uh, we need to take into account when discussing uh, our parliamentary uh, oversight. Then I just zero in on, on, the, case, uh, on the case of our country in terms of what uh, the, how the, the, this oversight can be supported in form of uh, uh, legislation. The constitution of Zambia 
requires parliament to oversee the performance of the executive. And among the functions that are listed is to ensure equity in the distribution of national resources among us the people, appropriating funds for public expenditure, scrutinizing public expenditure, approving public debt before it is contracted, and approving international agreements and treaties before these are acceded to or ratified. So even before we, we look at the standing orders uh, with the specific details, we already have the constitutional mandate that uh, par parliament is given in its oversight uh, uh, function. Now, uh, the, the main issue uh, in the discussion today is basically the role that parliament will play in both in budgeting and uh, uh, oversight. So in terms of the role that parliament plays, I tr traditionally, the, the, it, 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 the, the visible uh, stages are, are at the approval stage, and of course at the audit stage, when we, we receive uh, reports of the Auditor General and the public accounts is very active when uh, uh, scrutinizing them. But parliament ideally, particularly in the new dispensation, should be involved at all these four stages uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the budget uh, process. I'll start with uh, at the formulation stage. Most countries have adopted the medium term uh, planning and budgeting uh, uh, strategies. So at the formulation stage, parliament, most parliaments are given the opportunity to interrogate the medium term uh, expenditure frameworks. So in the Parliament has got uh, the opportunity to appreciate what the uh, policies of the government are uh, in the in the inter, uh, in the uh, uh, medium term, and in there brings in an opportunity to 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 to, to appreciate what the executive intends to deal with some of the issues that may be affecting. A particular country, and in this case, we're looking at issues to do with a, a crisis or a pandemic, like we have now, uh, the COVID uh, uh, situation. So, in the medium term, if it's uh, particularly for recurring uh, 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 issues that affect a, a nation, we can the Parliament may be may appreciate what uh, the policies are that deal with these things in the medium term. So, at uh, formulation stage. There's a window that uh, of engaging parliament uh, you, uh, when discussing or interrogating the medium term expenditure frameworks. The approval stage, of course, is, the, is one of the traditional uh, 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 stages that uh, people are very familiar with in that the budget is presented to parliament. So during this stage, at least the uh, parliament has got the opportunity to check the priorities and this can be linked with the strategies and uh, other issues that relate to uh, uh, pandemics and uh, crises, those that, uh, particularly those that are regularly happening, uh, as we shall discuss uh, later on in the presentation. And then there's an opportunity to reallocate funds, of course, at this stage. Then there's the implementation stage. Uh, when the, the budget is approved, then we, we see how uh, the budget is being uh, uh, implemented through the scrutiny of in-year reports for those uh, in those jurisdictions where these are produced and submitted to parliament. And then uh, uh, committees can be proactive. They can be reviewing the, the budget on a quarterly basis, uh, uh, particularly the budget uh, 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 committees. This is something in our, as a case example, we've got our budget committee in the National Assembly of Zambia, which scrutinizes the budget in the first quarter and uh, in the second quarter. And of course, there's, a, there's a also under this stage room for approval of supplementary uh, budget. And of course, the last stage is the audit stage in which we uh, 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 parliament scrutinizes the reports of the auditor general. And uh, most auditor general, uh, uh, most supreme audit institutions now have gone beyond just uh, uh, 
producing the regularity audits, which deal with the financial aspects. But now they've moved on to produce even performance uh, uh, performance reports, which looks at the or value for money audits, as uh, uh, sometimes they are referred to. I now uh, come uh, uh, to the issue of uh, the main uh, gist of the discussion, the, the crisis, uh, accountability during a, a period of a crisis. Now, crisis comes in many forms and varying degrees of severity and location. Some of them can be a result of human activity. They can be natural or even a combination of uh, uh, both. Uh, uh, yeah, particularly in, uh, in, our, uh, in the, develop, the developing world where we see a combination of uh, natural and uh, human activity uh, being uh, uh, happening at the same time, particularly for diseases like uh, cholera and whatever, which are a combination of the two. So the, the, the recent examples that we have that countries have faced in the recent past relate to the refugee crisis, particularly in Europe, which is as a result of wars and uh, people running away from poverty. Then we have droughts, uh, floods, wildfires, there are cyclones, uh, all the time happening at the same time. Then we had the financial crisis in 2008-2009. The countries, some countries have faced serious uh, debt issues. It becomes a crisis. For example, what happened in uh, Greece uh, fairly recently, uh, including some uh, uh, big, big uh, European countries, uh, economies face uh, this crisis. In South America, we also had Argentina facing similar crisis. Then we have the, the issue of disease. Africa has had a share of this, particularly with the Ebola uh, outbreaks. And now we have the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Of course, the COVID-19 pandemic is quite unique in that it's uh, the magnitude and scale is unprecedented and including the, the economic and social effects that it has had uh, are, are quite uh, uh, significant uh, to, to deal with. So in terms of uh, the accountability that comes, uh, the accountability challenges that are faced, of course, naturally, when a government faces a crisis or a pandemic, they come up with uh, measures to deal with uh, this. And the measures may, may, be, may include uh, some of the fiscal and monetary policies that we, we've been uh, reading about, and some of them we experience in our own respective countries of what the uh, the governments have the various various governments have done to to minimize the impact of uh, uh, the co corona uh, the co COVID nineteen effects. Now, usually, huge amounts of resources are immobilized domestically and uh, externally to deal with uh, uh, this crisis. Within the domestic economy, most uh, businesses come up with. Uh, uh, come up with uh, all sorts of uh, assistance to, to assist uh, the government. Now with this huge amount of resources that come, comes the challenge, the, the, the challenge of uh, accountability. Depending on uh, how the PFM uh, public financial management laws are couched, this can be easily dealt with uh, if uh, the, the systems are straightforward, but where there's an issue of weak, uh, weak institutions, this can be quite uh, uh, a challenge. The, the experiences, uh, some of the do documented experiences uh, from what uh, countries experience, particularly in Africa, when dealing with, for, for example, the Ebola uh, uh, outbreaks, uh, point to certain reasons why the accountability challenges emerge. These uh, include you know, the large scale uh, spending, large, large scale, because th there's a crisis, so there's, there's need for more expenditure to deal with triggers, uh, rent seeking uh, behaviors in uh, human beings. Then there's uh, the issue of uncoordinated involvement of many actors. There'll be certainly many actors. And if these 
are uncoordinated. It, uh, uh, it creates opportunity for inefficiency and leakage uh, in the use of uh, utilization of uh, uh, resources. At the same time, because it's, a, it's an emergency, it's a crisis, the speed, there's need for speed in, in implementing the interventions. But as you do this, uh, this tends to result in certain uh, uh, public financial management regulation being relaxed, particularly those relating to procurement, uh, those relating to accounting for extra budgetary funds. Remember that there'll be so many donations, uh, there'll be so much aid that comes, but this will be, most of them will be outside uh, the budgetary, the normal budgetary controls. So this uh, becomes a, a challenge. And then, of course, there's the ex post verification. After everything has been done, the Auditor General still has to go through uh, these documents in order to, 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 uh, to, to assist with uh, just how, uh, whether they were in conformity with the financial regulations that are, are in existence. However, despite these uh, challenges, there's still need for in, in enhanced oversight during uh, a, a times of an emergency or a pandemic or a crisis, uh, whatever we can call it. It does not mean that a, a crisis does not entail that the executive should have unfettered powers to do with uh, the challenges. Of course, uh, legislative bodies first the you know the age old dilemma that they are not specifically bodies that are built for speed action but any emergency requires them to act with uh, dispatch so they may not be as fast but in case of an emergency we still require that uh, legislators uh, are still should be able to to to, to run with what is uh, currently happening I'll give a, a, a specific uh, example of how this is possible uh, based on our experience here in uh, Zambia. We have a provision that requires that uh, if uh, there is need to incur expenditure that is unforeseen and is in form of an emergency and, uh, uh, and it cannot wait for the normal parliamentary system to approve it. The provision has, uh, has a, uh, the constitution of Zambia has a, has a provision which requires a parliamentary committee to approve any such uh, excess expenditure within a period of 48 hours after it, it is presented to them. So the, the, under this, the, the president will issue a warrant to incur that uh, 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 expenditure that was not originally approved but is, is, uh, is necessary uh, for, the, uh, uh, for, for the smooth running of uh, the economy in terms of uh, a crisis. So we see this uh, window that has been created that uh, parliament can approve such, uh, such expenditure within 48 hours. So the, it is possible uh, to, 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 to work at uh, this, uh, this speed. However, the most important thing to note is that uh, Parliament needs just to scrutinize uh, 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 the allocation of uh, uh, donated uh, resources. They're quite uh, significant in many cases. Not only that, uh, you know, like under the current uh, debt suspension, uh, debt service suspension initiative, there will be savings. There are savings that arise from the debt relief. So such savings need to be reallocated and the parliament involvement in the reallocation of such uh, savings uh, becomes uh, quite critical because of course they can't, the, the, the competing needs are still many. So the, the reallocation of these savings becomes uh, uh, quite uh, uh, critical. So what, what mechanisms can members use or what mechanisms can be used uh, for for this oversight in terms of uh, uh, a, a crisis. Of course, we we've heard, and I'm sure this is uh, the case in many countries of these uh, multi sector multi sector approaches to deal with uh, crisis. However, I think it's important to note that uh, if Parliament is not involved, 
then these multi-sector approaches become incomplete because parliament is actually a main uh, stakeholder. So it, uh, it, this underscores why uh, parliamentary oversight in terms of a pandemic like uh, COVID-19 still is, uh, remains uh, uh, critical. So parliament needs to be a real-time uh, player. At the same time, it also needs to be an export stakeholder uh, when uh, dealing with, uh, uh, with the crisis. So when the crisis is being managed, parliament needs to be involved in a way, even post when the crisis is over, we need to account of what we did and how the resources were, uh, uh, dealt, were, were, were how, how the resources were used. So some of the existing uh, mechanisms, uh, which are still very valid in terms of when faced with a crisis, Includes the parliamentary committee system. Uh, we have questions for that members can raise uh, to the executive. Motions can be moved by uh, uh, members. Uh, the public can bring petitions to parliament to take certain actions. So, so these are some of the uh, mechanisms that are still uh, still very much valid uh, and are in place in most uh, uh, parliaments. So my last bit is uh, really to, to share on how can this oversight be enhanced? Uh, firstly, uh, after the, after the 2008-2009 uh, financial crisis, most uh, there was a heightened uh, interest in uh, establishment of specialized units within uh, 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 parliamentary system and even outside in the executive uh, uh, executive arm of government, particularly the, the independent fiscal institutions for which uh, the parliamentary budget offices uh, belong. So there's need, uh, for, uh, need to establish or capacitate where these are already established, these offices and research units to assist members uh, in, uh, in their oversight uh, functions. Then, um, of course, like I mentioned, uh, Parliament needs to be an active player during a crisis. And uh, it is important that parliamentary committees need to be more active uh, during a crisis. Uh, and one of the issues that uh, uh, has been identified in which this can be enhanced is enhancing the capacity of committee clerks. Of course, members are, are also involved in there. Uh, thirdly, there's need for more collaboration, closer collaboration with uh, civil society uh, organizations. These uh, organizations usually conduct uh, social audits uh, and other social accountability uh, exercises that can feed, can feed into the oversight uh, function of, uh, of parliament. Uh, here, just giving an example here, what the business community did uh, uh, in Zambia, they came together and formed a task force which they called the uh, Business Council COVID-19 Emergency Task Force. So this was uh, made of various uh, professional bodies and uh, the, the business community to just assist uh, the state to deal with uh, the COVID-19. Then there's uh, audit institutions. Uh, the the offices of the Auditor General also should conduct special audits on any program that come, uh, the, the executive comes up with to deal with uh, uh, any any crisis. Uh, then, uh, uh, lastly, we, we, any crisis resolution process needs to be transparent. All stakeholders should have access to information. Uh, we've seen a bit of, uh, we've seen an improvement uh, under the COVID nineteen in that you see a regular update on on the expenditure side of how much has come in and uh, how much the government is spending uh, during the, uh, the crisis. But it's important that all institutions that are involved in dealing with uh, this uh, crisis make information available to all stakeholders uh, so that uh, through them, they may at least participate in the parliamentary processes. Yeah. Lastly, is that the, this oversight uh, function of the executive, uh, the executive function of uh, 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 the legislative oversight over the executive during a time a, a period of a crisis needs to be codified 
if there's any ambiguity in uh, the role that parliament can play, this will only tend to enhance the executive power. It will give more power to the executive to conduct uh, uh, certain programs, minus uh, with minimal uh, intervention by uh, the executive. Moderator, I think I'll end here just to allow for more, for more questions and, uh, and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kateshi, for that uh, lucid presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, honorable members, as the presenter has already stated, now is your opportunity to ask questions, to make comments on that uh, brilliant presentation. I'm happy you stuck to your time allocation, Mr. Kateshi. I tried my level best. I really tried my level best. We, we really appreciate it. Um, honorable members, now is your time to step in with your questions. Remember, Mr. Kateshi, begin with a quotation. Do whatever it takes, but make sure you keep the receipts. What, what do you think? You, you may come in, Honorable Member, if that is a question or a comment. Yes, Chair. Uh, I'd like to submit a question. Uh, thank you so much for the, for the presentation. I, I'm just wondering on the issue of the 48-hour turnaround time, which I, I find very interesting, honestly. I just want to find out if the, 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 the parliamentary committees are the normal parliamentary committees that are, are exercising their oversight function on, the, on various ministries. Like in my country, we have the economic cluster which uh, oversights on finance, trade ministry, etc. So is he referring to these committees with respect to the, to the committees that, uh, with, the, with respect to the ministries? that they are overlooking. That's number one. And number two, I just want to assess the practicality of it. Because during COVID-19, during the hard lockdown, it was, it was rather impossible to move. And if the committee sit, granted now that the, 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 the lockdown is relaxed a bit. So that means physically we can meet and, and try to go through some, some documentation as far as government is concerned. But the practicality of it that I'm questioning is, like, for example, now we're meeting over Zoom. Some members are there, some aren't, aren't available. So how do we find that effective when the committees really have to get down to the nitty gritties of the ministries that they are overlooking? That's number one. And number two, um, we've had instances where funds have been... Um, and I, it's, it's, it's the same experience with most of us, I've realized the misuse of funds. And I, I just want to assess the accountability aspect of it. Uh, how, do we, how do we address it? Because in my case, Lesotho, we have not until today had a situation where we scrutinize the usage of the budget vis-a-vis uh, -vis COVID. And I, I don't think that is, that is proper or that is in, 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 in line with how we should be doing things. What would be your, your advice? Thank you. Moderator, can I proceed to answer? Yes, with pleasure, Mr. Kateshi. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Honorable uh, Member, for that, uh, uh, for, for those uh, three, I think I picked out three, three issues in there. Uh, which I'll, I'll, I'll touch on. The first one related to, are we talking about the normal committees that we have or we, we need to have an ad hoc or special, uh, con specially constituted uh, uh, committees? If, if time allows, 
uh, specialized uh, uh, special committees would be the best because parliament would know, you know, would have uh, the privilege of uh, constituting a team looking at the, the various capabilities of uh, members to deal with a particular crisis. However, like I mentioned, uh, we are faced with an emergency. So again, any delay uh, in constituting a, a committee may, may, may support you know, a view that maybe parliament slows uh, down uh, interventions. So the use of uh, existing committees, depending on uh, the type of uh, crisis that we have, may be uh, the best uh, way uh, to go. So if it's such a, the, the, the situation is that it's, it needs an uh, agent uh, uh, intervention, then using existing committees would be the best because constituting a specialized committee, you know, you, you definitely need a, a, a bit of uh, uh, time. Now, there's the issue that when, uh, you know, during the hard uh, lockdown, there was, uh, you know, there was minimal physical contact. Yes, I admit that initially when uh, we, all countries were uh, trying to minimize the, the impact of COVID, uh, we all, uh, uh, you know, we, we, certain measures had to be taken. Of course, we, we suffered in the process, but I think with time, uh, almost uh, it has been realized now that uh, we can use ICT platforms to do quite a lot now. A, 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 a committee once uh, constituted or given the mandate, they can virtually meet and make a, a resolution. This is already happening, uh, including uh, passing a very important uh, uh, decision. Like I mentioned, uh, when we had uh, a warrant to deal with uh, excess expenditure, to deal with the COVID-19. The, the committee, when it first sat, they sat virtually and the decision was made and the executive was, was able to proceed minus members physically are meeting. So with time, we've learned how to, uh, how to, how to conduct our business. Then thirdly, it's uh, the issue of, uh, the issue of misuse of funds. And an example has been mentioned like uh, the case of, uh, Lesotho, where uh, I think there was some uh, uh, emergency prog uh, program to do with an emergency and the, the funds were not uh, uh, scrutinized, the use of the funds. This is why I mentioned that uh, there's need for Supreme Audit institutions to have uh, the mandate to conduct special audit on, on such uh, uh, programs. Uh, I know that in, a, in our case, we have not seen one report, but there was a constant uh, uh, statement by the Auditor General that they were scrutinizing the donations as they were coming in and being utilized, uh, by the, particularly by the Ministry of Health in dealing with the, some of the issues under uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, so those were just statements. We haven't yet seen any report yet, but I believe that it will be out, which the uh, the Public Accounts Committee uh, uh, will definitely deal, uh, will scrutinize in detail. So I think the, the main important issue is that Auditor General's report, uh, the Auditor General's office should have the mandate to produce specialized audit reports beyond the regularity reports that we, 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 we are used to. Thank you. Thank you, moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kateshi. Hon honorable members, it's still your time. We're waiting for your comments and questions. In terms of the specialized report from the Auditor General, uh, Mr. Kateshi, would you recommend a time frame? Because uh, I think it would defeat the purpose for uh, such an audit report to then 
get to parliament, say, a year later, when the new normal is become the normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the, the time available, uh, the time in which parliament needs uh, to receive that, these reports is, uh, is, is a very, uh, is cardinal to the whole issue of accountability. A delayed, uh, a delayed report definitely uh, will not uh, yield much uh, because the, you, you know the, the, the answers uh, uh, come through when uh, we, we're receiving these uh, submissions from controlling officers. They will accept that this thing has happened. However, the, the officers who were involved have since left the system. So what did you do now? <laughs> so any delay uh, will result in such, a, in such a responses. However, if uh, I think uh, uh, if this can be done, probably in a in a period of not not more than six months, uh, that would be much helpful. If they can do in three, uh, that would even be better, because I know that in most uh, countries, end of year reports, including uh, our uh, uh, here, within, within after three months after. Uh, after end of a financial year, the accountant general is required to, to prepare the accounts for the main accounts of the Republic within three months and submit this to the auditor general. Yeah, so if that for the whole system takes uh, uh, three months, it should be equally uh, possible to zero in on a specific program and produce a report even much earlier than three months. Thank you. Any more questions or comments, honorable members? I know it's a difficult time just after lunch. <laughs> well, I presume there are no more questions. Uh, I would like to thank you, Mr. Kateshi, for that brilliant presentation. We are now moving on to this lot that deals generally with the sharing of experiences by honorable members on budgeting and public financial management in respective countries. So we are still in plenary honorable members, it's your time. Anyone in the executive to quickly check on our participants? Are we all back? Honorable Chair, we have about, we have about uh, seven members present. We just lost one, one member. Hopefully they can connect soon. I'm sure it's owing to the uh, technical glitches. Um, I'm, I'm trying to elicit uh, responses, uh, comments from my colleagues. Honorable members, are you there? On, on, on the question of uh, budgeting in, in, in general, I realized that my country, Zimbabwe, was ranked the best country in terms of budget transparency in Africa. However, there is need to improve on public financial management and of course, the question of corruption, corruption, corruption that keeps rearing its ugly head. The picture, unfortunately, isn't entirely rosy because, as I mentioned before, we have experienced budget overruns, we have also experienced quasi 
fiscal activities. And indeed, we have seen, particularly uh, in relationship to the COVID outbreak, the emergence of unapproved expenditure. And the other worrying issue has been a budget that is divorced from reality. So those are some of the quick, quick experiences that uh, come at the top of my head in relationship to my country, Zimbabwe. Chair, can I come in? Yes, please, Honorable Tsepan, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. I'm waiting for other honorable members to, to come in. Um, first of all, congratulations to Zimbabwe for having attained that uh, ranking, despite uh, the, the other challenges that you are relating to, but, but it, it's really commendable, at least Thank on, you, the, on that. Um, yes. Now, coming to Lesotho, my case on um, issues raised or coming out of COVID-19, the emergence of COVID-19, I think we share a similar situation in the sense that um, there were some expenditure items that were irregularly, uh, can I think, what's the word, but irregularly sought by government. And now that has brought us to a frustration because granted the process was irregular, but the suppliers of the services expect to be paid. And with everybody in a frustration of finances, this has created some havoc on, uh, it has increased pressure on the government to be responsive to the needs of the people, especially the people that have served it in, in times of need. That is how it is, it is uh, voiced. And secondly, we, we had a change of government right in the middle of COVID or right when everybody was very much um, uh, uh, frustrated with the, with the, with the COVID, the emergence of COVID-19 and it coming down to Africa and ultimately landing into Lesotho. So there was a change of, of, of government and there were some promises and some financial obligations that the previous government had made. Now, with the incoming government or the change of government, this obligation, some of which were not necessarily in line with the, the, the financial procedures, they had to be carried over to the next government. And for a citizen looking from outside, they are not bothered who is coming in, who made a mistake. They simply want to be, to be paid. That's number one, or rather that's number two. And then there was a body that was formulated out of legis uh, legislated means. Um, that was the, the command center, which was intended to address all the, 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 the issues relating to COVID-19. And the formation of it uh, has rendered it null and void and all the processes that went with, with, with it. So that means all the services that were provided, there's a lot of um, scrutiny that has to go around around that. But this new government, there was a yet another body that was formulated to look around the, 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 the financial, or rather anything that has to do with COVID-19. And that body as well has been dismantled because its formation was also not proper. So we have a, a very chaotic situation. The government within our committees, we have not yet had a, 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 a chance to scrutinize the usage of finances in the country vis-a-vis -vis COVID-19. That is also a very huge uh, dimension that we have to address as far as government is concerned. We, are, we have not even yet been able at all, at all, at all to, to, to do our proper oversight on the government funds, putting aside uh, COVID-19. So that means there's immense pressure to actually get back on the ground and, and, and uh, you know, 
exercise our oversight role in making sure that uh, the, the, the government funds are used in the interest of the people. And that is not happening when one is looking from afar. But our, our hands are sort of tied because there's so much business that is going on. And yes, I, I accept, as the previous speaker has just said, we shouldn't waste time and every cent must be accounted for. But it's very, very much difficult during the COVID period, also, there have been some donations, there have been some funds uh, coming in from all over the world. We've not yet had time to scrutinize and actually understand how much the government has received from whom and how the funds have been used. So it's quite a, a serious situation. And we also have now to start budgeting for next year. Everybody's jobless, everybody's frustrated. The, the, the country is, you know, is dealing with serious issues of unemployment and finances come at the top of that. That is my submission, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Putsepang, are you still on? I, I must have lost uh, quite a bit uh, of what you said, but I'm sure the others were still connected. Yes, uh, you, you, know. you were having a sip of water. I, I just closed and, and said uh, the frustration is about the financial situation in the country. Thank you, Chair. Okay, it, it, it keeps kicking me out, but uh, we will make do as it works in fits and fits. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I, I had been kicked out again. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, Edna, can you hear me? Yes, Chair, I can hear you. You may proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry about uh, the gremlins in our system here. Um, I'm not sure if there was a reaction while I was gone to Honorable Tsepang's uh, uh, input. Uh, for our presenters, you may also feel free to come in and uh, uh, respond to some of the issues that uh, honorable members uh, are, are raising. Are there any more uh, inputs from honorable members, honorable colleagues, are you there? Any reactions from our secretariat? Honorable Chair, we may proceed with the program. But bef before you give your, your remarks, Honorable Chair, I was just corrected by Afro Dad that the, the summer school will be held in Zimbabwe and not Zambia as announced, and therefore only honorable members from Zimbabwe at the Sadiq Parliamentary Forum who physically attend this, this event and all other members who attend the event uh, virtually. Honorable Chair, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope honorable members have uh, taken note. The summer school will be held in, in Zimbabwe and not in Zambia is uh, announced uh, earlier. 
if there are no more contributions from the other honorable members, this then brings us to the end of the meeting. Allow me, honorable members and distinguished participants, to thank you very much for your dedication, which has been shown through your commitment during this meeting. Allow me to extend my profound appreciation on behalf of the Standing Committee on Trade, Industry, Finance and Investment to our resource persons, particularly from Afrodad and the Parliamentary Budget Office in the Zambian Parliament for positively responding to this call. I wish to encourage you our resource persons to maintain this strong relationship that has been exhibited with the SADC Parliamentary Forum under the great leadership of our Secretary General. Honorable members, following the presentations and various engagements that have taken place during this meeting, we have remained with a duty of checking to our respective countries the lessons learned during this engagement. This engagement has re-emphasized our role in legislation oversight, including budget oversight and representation as members of parliament. This engagement has revealed that pandemics or crises such as COVID-19 and Look, focus with which some certain countries are already experiencing require members of parliament to actively quest, question government expenditure and ensure that every penny spent is in the best interest of the citizens of our respective countries. I therefore implore honorable members of this committee to a extensively exercise their oversight role in budget oversight in order to ensure that budgets correctly reflect the needs of our people. B, to thoroughly scrutinize mining tax laws, development agendas so that our governments do not continue losing revenue through clauses, through, I'll take that again, I beg your pardon. Through secrecy clauses embedded in these agendas. See, ensure that our governments do not offer too many tax incentives, such as tax holidays at the expense of domestic revenue mobilization. D, see to it that government borrowing is done within the context of approved procedures and that the borrowing is within acceptable limits, bearing in mind unforeseen circumstances such as pandemics and crisis. With these few words, honorable members, I wish to thank the Secretary General and all the members of staff at the SADC Parliamentary Forum for working tirelessly to ensure that this meeting is a success. Honorable members, I thank you. Merci beaucoup. Obrigado. Thank you, Honorable Chair. If it's in order, I see Honorable Tsepang has indicated maybe should want to say something before we close. Chair, should I proceed?
Okay. Okay, Edna, maybe since the chair has already closed the session, uh, we will take the opportunity of reading the, the, the comments. Thank you. Honorable Tepang, the chair is still is trying to connect back. If you could hold on for a second. But, but the vice chair is present. Honorable vice chair. I'm, I'm here, uh, oh, oh, Edna. The chair, the chair is back. Honorable Tepang has an issue to, to mention. Yes, I, I say. I said we may indulge her. She, she may go ahead. Oh, okay, Chair. Thank you so much. Apologies if I, I seem to be coming in when you have already made your, your remarks. But I, it's just a, a closing comment, Chair. First of all, may we please have the other presentations emailed to us? But the one of crucial importance is I, I, my, the observance is that maybe we are not participating because we are uh, doing multiple tasks and therefore it gives a false impression of uh, our presence in the meeting. So if possible, maybe a chair would uh, recommend that members show their live videos when we are attending meetings. And if one has an obligation outside, it would be uh, nice to indicate that um, one has another commitment so that at least you are, you are able to determine who is present and not just uh, you know making guesses if we are present or not. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, I also felt that uh, it's one or two or three members were were really participating, but I wouldn't want to think honourable members uh, would uh, do the connect and move away kind of uh, thing. But I really felt even our presenters were talking to empty chairs. I'm sure this is something that uh, behind the scenes we'll, we'll take up together with the secretariat to appeal to members because this new normal might be with us for a long time to come. So it would not help members to keep speaking to empty chairs, but I am happy for those that were in attendance and those that showed active attendance. I thank you. May I bring or call this meeting to an end? Thank you, thank you members. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. You are all invited to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> the Can you have the Can you have the please? Thank you. Thank you for the virtual dinner. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Lena.